This retrospective is really uh, a remarkable experience for me because it's given me a chance to really put my work together over decades, really almost four decades. And seeing my work hanging in a professional, elegant space has been very edifying as well as satisfying. The thing that's interesting is to see the span of work in two different areas, sort of my left brain, the logical part, my science brain in the science communication gallery, and then my right brain, the more intuitive feeling part in the art gallery. What, what strikes me in looking over the range of my work for the last 40 years, now as I'm approaching 65, is to see the, the, the patterns and how it has evolved and some of the motifs that are consistent over long periods of time. Most of the work here I've not seen all together. To have this display uh, really lets me sit back and look and you know sort of marvel at what's uh, <laughs> what what I've done. This show sort of demonstrates to me that I've stayed true to that part of myself, that artistic part of myself, and uh, that's very satisfying. I first saw his work, I was really touched by the light and the energy in the work and really spoke to me. And as the process of unpacking all these years of work unfolded, it was an amazing journey. The energy of walking into the gallery and being surrounded by all this color and motion was a really good way for the audience to experience the work and then move into the side galleries which are quieter, more contemplative periods of his work. As somebody who grew up in New York City, Baja was one of my first really deep experiences of the natural world. Baja really was one of, I feel, my spots on this planet, and I was almost possessed by the energy there. It was so pure and austere and raw. What Baja and the Southwest period of my painting really represent is this openness to the broad expanse and vistas of nature. These drawings behind me, the Porter series and the Beggar series, were done in India in 2000, and I would go out with a, a sketchbook, and I'd go in the city or the railroad station in Delhi, and i just sketch people, and then I'd come back, and fortunately her mother, who's very fastidious about their home, gave me a room to work in. So she, uh, she took allowed it. him to make a mess in one of the rooms, <laughs> which was a big and deal. And she allowed him to actually raid the kitchen, where he uh, he raided all the spice cabinets and got the chili and the turmeric and coriander powder. Uh, this is an homage uh, not only to the people of India. These series, even though they're they're troubling, they were troubling for me to do because uh, it shows the the poverty of India and the hardship that people face. But also they're an homage to the strength and power of India and I wouldn't even be in India without this wonderful person in my life who pulled me over there into this other planet, planet India. The spiritual landscapes evolved out of the Baja paintings and Southwest paintings. Stylistically, my work sort of evolved and I started working with impastos, building up the surface of the canvas itself. The work really comes out of my deep love of the ocean and my deep connection with the ocean. It's really what brought me to San Diego as a graduate student to study at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. So there were paintings both done at night, uh, the moon setting over the Pacific Ocean near the house in Del Mar. And the same thing would happen during the day and did a whole series called Light Waves. There are also paintings that were done when I helped a friend out in Alaska. He was doing research. I helped him during the day on the Bering Glacier. When I came back from that expedition, I did a whole series of paintings that mean a lot to me. I like how the colors are really soft. As one of the titles said, um, they're spiritual landscapes. It's kind of like therapy for me right now, watching them. Um, it calms you down. The release paintings are an evolution of my work from the more representational to the abstract. 
I'm really trying to capture pure energy as we experience our life and then the transition when we die. These paintings were done after the death of first my father and then my mother, and a sense of them sort of moving on in their energy domain. I mean, it just, he's so uh, connected with the human condition and the human emotion and they're exemplified in, in his drawings. I mean, the way he works with the human face and the expressions. There is this flow of dynamic energy. All of the work is about growth, it's about change. The Moksha and Dark Forest paintings really are the works more recently done in India. Moksha is the Hindu uh, concept of release and liberation. I was working basically with those abstract concepts, trying to envision what that approach towards freedom beyond our karma in this life and the many lives that Hindu philosophy and believe occur for us. The dark forest paintings were sort of my connection to the forest, moving deeper into the Himalayan forest where Kamala and I live. We're surrounded by very old trees, and I felt the power of these trees. The science and environmental communications part of the exhibit really focuses on the professional work that I did and my companies did from 1980 through almost 2000. We were really working with the major science agencies in the United States, NASA, NOAA, and the U.S. Geological Survey to communicate complex issues about the Earth system to all sorts of audiences from young students to policymakers and the general public and academics. All of these concepts of global change and uh, the human impact on the Earth, which were becoming much more apparent from satellite observations, were the driving force for all of this work with my staff at Internetwork and later Internetwork Media. The result is, of course, the, the country, in collaboration with the French Space Agency, has flown all these missions that we planned for. Really, it all began here with all these great graphics. Payson was really the taskmaster, man with the ideas. It's really created a scientific revolution. In our industry, everything is now computer to plate, everything is very, very heavy into computers. Payson Stevens was the pioneer in the printing industry of the computer, the disk output. Out of the print work and my early involvement with the digital technologies, we began to realize that this was the next new wave of communication and started developing some of the very first and pioneering multimedia CD-ROMs to create interactive experiences. The life cycle of a wave starts far and sea. We could combine video and audio and animations all in one interactive piece. Eventually, President Clinton in 1994 gave Internet Work the Presidential Design Award for this groundbreaking work. My work at the company CRM that started Psychology Today in the late 60s and had a college textbook division gave me the opportunity to start exploring and playing with the idea of paper folding in a book to explain complex scientific concepts. The DNA central dogma was the first one I did, and through a series of three or four folds, you go through the main concepts of how DNA works. The structure function fold out was even more complicated because it compared the energy unit in animals, the mitochondria, to the energy unit in plants, chloroplast. The folding earth is one of the pieces that I'm, I'm most happy with in my career and wanting to have sort of a multimedia experience of science even in a print format. And this piece is basically an unfolding of the earth from 225 million years ago through the present showing the aspects of continental drift and plate tectonics. So what does it mean to be able to do science in art? It, it's really about seeing the world, and we all have that capacity. And, and what the, the scientist does is he, he looks for patterns in a very specific kind of way. Basically create um, theories and ideas of what the natural world is like, and whether it's repeatable. It's más importante hacer sus dibujos, practicar, practicar, practicar. Diario, diario. Diario, pintar. Sí, para inspiración. 